Welcome to today's live learning, clarifying the difference between the separate self, I, and the one being, I. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of this group, Answering the Call, and the creator of the idea of wisdomary leading, that we lead our lives, our teams, our organizations, our families, our communities with the wisdom of who we truly are, the one being that we truly are. And I'm so glad you're with us today. And uh, in this Facebook group, or if you're watching this on YouTube, if you want to check out the Facebook group at, at some point, the purpose of this group is for us to, um, uh, to continue to explore these conversations and who we truly are so that we can live more in alignment with who we truly are. So the title, Answering the Call, has to do with answering that call, that longing. Something's missing. I know there's something more to life. Or who am I? Curious about knowing the truth of who I am. And so that's the call that we're answering that. And then once we do that, then we want to more fully express that knowing out in the world. And so there's kind of a second call with that, answering the call. Of now I want to really live fully as who I am and really listen for my unique way to express who I am and who we all are in the world. So if you're here live or if you're watching this on video, I mean on replay, please put in the comments uh, either hashtag replay or if you're live as Sharon is, say hi, hi Sharon. So glad that you're here. Thank you, thank you. And if you have any questions or comments, live or on the replay please put them in the comments and I will get back to you so let's let's us get started with clarifying the difference between the separate self I and the one being I so as I um, mentioned in the um, in the uh, the information about this particular session uh, that it can be confusing when we use the word I to refer to both the identity that we identify with a separate self and then we use the word I of course again to when we're talking about the one being that we are so that can be confusing so we're going to be more skillful hopefully today after this at differentiating them for yourself because you're going to keep using that word with uh, as you as you become more fully knowing that you're the one being, you're not going to use a different word for I. It's not because we say that all the time. I am. I'm going to the grocery store. Or I am uh, going to cook dinner. Or I'm going with my friends to lunch. We use the word I all the time. And, and so, but it can be confusing. Uh, so we're going to explore, yes, just what I said. That we're using the same word to mean two different things. What the two different things are the challenges of language, and using the word I to take yourself back to yourself. So yes, you know we, we do that a lot, use the same word for two different things, like the word bat for both, uh, of course that one's kind of easy because it's um, um, very obvious, the, the, the mantle bat and a baseball bat. So, but then we say we're going to bat things around, of course that references the baseball bat, I guess. Um, and, and the word consciousness, I've talked about this before, people talk, we talk about the consciousness that we are and then human consciousness and those are actually, well, they're actually the same thing but when we're talking about them, most people think they're different and so that's really confusing, the same word for really two different things that people are talking about. So it's been done before. And, uh, and we, when, especially when we're using the word I, we want to know with ourselves what we're actually doing. So what are the two different things? So from very early on in life, we start identifying instead of with the one being that we are, we start identifying with the sense of a separate self. We come by that uh, naturally, honestly, we're, we're basically told we're separate, there's Peggy over there, my parents are over there, and so on. So right from the get-go, we're conditioned into this belief and this thinking and this way of living that there's I and then there's everything else. I and everything else. Separate objects, separate material objects, which of course as we explore here all the time is not reality. 
not the nature of reality. It's our experience. It's our experience. We need that experience in order to stay alive and to live and to thrive and all that. But yet that's not reality as we know it. So so there's that um, that so there's that I. We we've used it up until you've been here or something else occurred for you that 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 you're not who you think you've been taught that you are. But so we use that word to really believe we're a separate self. I there's this I that I'm talking about. This I'm this body. I'm these thoughts. I'm these emotions. I am this separate entity. So we have that strong feeling of that, of separation, when we say the word I. But as we know who we truly are, then we realize every time I'm saying I, I'm really saying I source, I consciousness, I awareness, I spirit, I wisdom being, I infinite intelligence, because that's who we truly are. So when we use that, so so that's the other I that we're talking about. The I that is not separate from anything. The I that is one with everything. Um, so we're going to talk how to help you when you're talking. Uh, in a mo moment, I'm going to talk about how when you're talking, when you're out in the world, when you're writing, using those, how to help you begin to integrate more the latter, that you have that sense of that when you use the word I. And of course the challenges of language that just kind of goes without saying. I mean, it's just it's it's just a challenge for us to to live in the world as who we truly are with the language the way that it is right now. Maybe it'll evolve. Occasionally I try to say something like wisdomary. So I try to bring in some new words, some new things, uh, new ways to, to, to use words or new words. Uh, you know, but that's challenging too. So, uh, so, so language, by the way it's used, you know, we name things with language, nouns, that alone creates separation. There are other languages where people talk more in verbs. Like a lot of indigenous people, 70% of their words are verbs and 30% nouns. Ours is the opposite. We've got 70% nouns, 30% verbs. So ours is more of a static language, a material, uh, an object, subject-object language. So, and so it's just challenging. Um, but it's fun too. It's fun to, 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 to start um, relating to language and, and who we are differently. It just becomes a fun aspect, but it does take vigilance so that we, we don't, uh, so that we can feel into the world and feel ourselves differently as we use language in different ways. And then we can use the word I to take ourselves back to ourselves. So every time you write the word I, say the word I, you can, instead of it calling forth this sense of separation, this I am Peggy over here, you can start using it to evoke the sense of oneness that you actually are. And how can you do that? So we're going to do, do something right now where you have the opportunity to experience that. And then you just you can write yourself a note to remember this. And then you, over time, as you remember this over and over and over again and engage with this, and just, you'll see it just takes a second or two. <laughs> then every time you say, I, then, you, then it, you, you, it calls forth who you truly are. You, it, you just feel it because you've used it so many times in the way that we're about to use it. So what I'm going to encourage you to do right now is silently to yourself, sound the name that you actually are, I. So just say it once gently within yourself and allow yourself to be taken into that to which it refers. Allow yourself to be taken into that to which it refers, I.
so that so you can you know have fun with this and and every time you say I just for a split second allow yourself to be taken into who you truly are the I that you are it's actually a divine name because it speaks to the divine nature of each of us of all of us so I'm going to see if there are any questions or comments hey Sheila you're here too thank you live and alive that's great <laughs> It's always good. <laughs> so any questions or comments from either of you? Yes, yeah, so it's very simple. It's just it's it, it's just reminding ourselves over and over again and and then another thing is to stay vigilant that 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 when we say I am, like the other day I caught myself saying I am maybe I said tired, something like that. I am tired. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Tired is a feeling. I am not a feeling. Uh, so we can be more vigilant with our language saying things like, I am feeling tired. And, and so really paying attention to how we're completing any statements that start with, I am. Because then, whether we realize it or not, we're, we're identifying with that, what we add on after I am. So to, 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 to be speaking in ways and thinking in ways, so when you catch yourself saying something or speaking something that's not in alignment with the love, the peace, the freedom, the joy, the fulfillment that you actually are, you can then say it differently, think it differently if it comes to you to do so. I'll put a note on the somewhere to remind yourself to to do the best that you can because we're not in control as we've talked about so we're not in control but the more we remember or it comes to us to speak in these ways to think in these ways then we more naturally do that just automatically because we it just it, the other dissolves because we keep recognizing that's not who we are so it dissolves because we don't put our attention on it we allow it to dissolve so to complete sentences I am with what is true for who we are. So I'll briefly review today that again, yes, it can be confusing. <laughs> it can be confusing. Well, I'm talking about I. What am I talking about? Okay, so, so the this, this sense of a separate self is not who we truly are, so we can just, we can remember that. that that's and we'll catch ourselves sometimes speaking I and trying to be separate. Well, I did that. So that can also be like a, uh, a, a red flag, an invitation. Oh, I guess my belief in separation is still pretty strong here. So we can look into that. Like, where is that coming from? You know, where, what, why do I need to experience feeling separate right now? We can do inquiry into that. So, but over time, that'll fade. That'll, you'll, we'll stop talking that way and feeling that way. And then, so the more often that you uh, sink into I, allow I to take you to the source that you are, then when you say I, right I, that experience will come forward. Less and less the sense of separation. And, um, and just, and, you know, just, be allowing with it just you know be compassionate as best you can when you realize the struggle of this because it's it's it, and if you have any questions about it let me know and because but it is it's simple but in our experience it can be very challenging who's this i am talking about you can ask yourself that question who is this i am talking about oh i realize i'm talking about a separate self that doesn't exist okay in, you'll say something different. Some or just a different thought will come to you. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to say? Nope. I think I covered it all today. I'll check again. See if there are any. Oh, we've got some. So Shel, uh, she, she, Shelly, uh, <laughs> Kelly, Sheila, Sheila. Good point. Notice what follows the words "I am." 
feeling are who we are. Thank you, Sheila, for um, emphasizing that. Yeah. And Sharon, to identify with the universal I, let go of the thoughts, images, conditions that created the separate I. And that great distinctions to add there. Yeah, and the fact that when I say I, and I'm still think relating to that I as a separate self, that's what's going to come up too. Everything that's aligned with that sense of self. So, so yeah, as we notice thoughts or images or conditions that created that sense of a separate self, just don't just relax the focus of attention. Ignore all of that. And over time, you will. I mean, for me, well, most of that's like faded in the distance. I hardly ever, a lot of it I could see, it doesn't even come to me anymore. So over time, it really fades. It's more and more and more. So that's what will happen, exactly what Sharon is saying. And um, then, yeah, Sheila points out, feelings aren't who we are. And, we, you know, watch what you say after I am, because that reinforces your sense of who you believe that you are. And who you are is source, consciousness, love, peace, joy. Thank you for being here today, and I'll see you soon. See you next week. Bye.